Hey guys, today I have a very interesting video for you. I have with me here a says automatic voltage regulator. On the back of it, here we can input 80 to 260 volts and we can get either 110 volts out or 220 volts out regulated but the complaint is that it's not outputting the 220 so I'll just hook it up to verify that and then open it up to see what's taking place so let me just take the terminals off here so that I can power this thing on so I'm just going to use a simple jump cable to hook up the the input voltage so this in this case I'll be inputting 110 volts so there's a switch here that says when the switch is in you can input 80 to 140 volts when the switch is out, you can input 140 to 260 volts. So, I'm gonna put it in, and I'm gonna power this TV up. Now, there's no light here. Uh, let me check the front. There's a main switch in front. I can see the input. Guys, let me bring the camera around so I can show you the input. You can see there is input, but no output. So if I take my meter, just to verify, let's just say for argument, the meter is not working in front. Just use my Yes, sir. But I'm having 10 volts, 9.9 .9 volts output AC. So definitely there's something wrong. So I'm just going to disconnect this. And I'll open it up. I'll take a look inside. Remember guys, in this workshop, I use no schematics. So everything is done the hard way. Our workshop is in South America, Guyana. It's in the town of Corvaton in the county of Barbies. You can check out my other videos. The name of this channel is Tech Repairs. I have lots of interesting videos. You can check them out. If you can learn from them. If my video can help anyone, you can share them. Now this is what the inside of this thing looks like. I have a big Torado transformer. So, I have to figure out why you're not getting any output. So what I like to do first of all is a visual inspection. Whenever I open up something, I look for bad capacitors, like physically damaged capacitors, uh, resistors, uh, corroded wires, stuff like that. So upon checking, there's a little circuit board here. Seems okay in terms of no bouncing capacitors, no wires looking overheated. But when I check at the back where these terminals are connected on the 240 look, you can see this? The wire is corroded and it's loose 
from the terminal. So what I will do, I have to take the ring clamp out and take off the bad piece of this wire. Hopefully I have enough length to, not to join it, but to just crimp it back and put it on. So stay with me and you'll see how I do this repair. Remember guys, make sure you absorb all safety. If you want to work along with my videos, please absorb all the safety and do so at your own risk. All right. So this is the piece of ring clamp that they wire out from. Guys, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. If it can help anyone, you can share them. And guys, if you like how I troubleshoot, if you like to make any comments, you can leave them in the comment section. Let me hear what you think about my, my way of Troubleshooting and repair. Guys, I have over 25 years of experience in this workshop with this kind of job, and I've been doing it all these years without any schematic or anything like that. I'm gonna use back the same ring. What I'll do, I'll clean it up. And this time, instead of crimping the wire, I will solder the wire. I figure because the wire, the crimp was probably loose and caused the wire to arc and eventually burn out. So, I'm gonna just take the bad piece off. get some flops. Guys, you want to be extra careful when dealing with this flux. Use protection. I have an extractor fan also that extract the fumes from these soldering. Whenever I use this flux, I like to use my mask. Flux is very dangerous. Yes, nice and shiny. We put some solder on the clip. Instead of using crimp, there's still place on the, the fins that I can clamp when the solid is dry. Good. So, guys, here we go. I have it all nice and solid here.
that we just clean it up a little, make the contacts nice and shiny. Someone else was in here, but I don't know how they didn't absorb this, but nevertheless came to my workshop and I'm glad it came so I can share it with you guys. All right? But all nice and tight. Um, let me power it back and see what's gonna happen. Guys, here is the moment. So we got one ten in. Still don't see any output voltage here. But let me just verify that from the back. Still no voltage. guys I still have no voltage so that did not solve the problem so I have to do some more examining um, you can see this transformer the wire is aluminum so I know the aluminum does corrode sometimes, but let me just check these switches, verify that they work. I know the input switch is working because I'm having input voltage, the input connected like switch. But this switch is for the 110 volts output, and I'm not getting 110 volts either. So let me just check the switch, verify that it's working. Yeah, yeah, the switch is working. So, there is definitely something else because I was, I was supposed to get 110 volts then if they want. 20 to 20 is not working. So let me just examine these connections here on the transformer. Okay. And I'm just doing a visual inspection of these uh, of these connections. guys as you can see fixing the corroding wire did not solve the problem so I went further and I took this circuit board off well I did not disconnect it I just removed the anchors 
and upon visual inspection, these relays is like, is like a bank with relays. A few of them, the contacts, the, the, the solder is uh, loose. So I'm gonna resolder everyone and then have a second check. So let me go and resolder all the broken contacts or dry solder, some people say. Because I supposed to at least hear some kind of a clicking sound or so when I power up this thing from these relays as they're trying to regulate the current but that did not happen so this can be the issue here just the, the pins that, that is connected to the relay coils I noticed almost all of them one of the pin the solder is loose so Back. Hopefully I get it right. If not, then I have to do some component testing. If this doesn't work, then I will have to do some component testing, which will take some time. So I will have to pause the video until I'm finished with that, and then I'll let you guys in on the secret so I finished retouching the relays let me just double check and see what's going to happen here all right let me see I still can't see Oh yeah, you have to wait a little. Um, the delay time is on. I don't want to use the delay time. Um, yeah, look guys. You hear that click? The relay just click. And now you can see, you can see the output voltage meter gone up. So, let me test the output directly at the back to see what's going on here. Pay attention to the meter. Should get 220 volts, thereabout. I'm having 232 volts, which is acceptable with these kind of stabilizers. And also on the 110, I'm having 114 volts, if you can see the meter. So guys, that completes the troubleshoot and repair of this automatic voltage regulator. So, as you can see, it wasn't just the one wire that I showed you. It had to do with these relays also. The, the, the coil on the relay, the coil pins were loose, the solder was loose. I did all the retouching and now the stabilizer is working. And as you can see, I did it without using a schematic. So if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. If you know it can help anyone, you can share it. If you have any comments for me, leave it in the comment section. Thank you, and see you in another video.